Well, good morning. <clears throat> My name is Pastor Rob Jackson. Certainly you've been uh, seeing me on uh, the different YouTube channels with Ashland Assembly of God. And this week we're coming to you from my backyard and my porch. Why? Because this week is uh, Hartsburg Pumpkin Festival. One of the things that we choose to do as a church, instead of, uh, you know, uh, having having empty seats, we can just embrace it and, in, and enjoy the opportunity. Uh, they've got a community service down there, and we talked about that last week. But uh, certainly... We've got uh, a chance to just embrace the community, see people, have a nice little community opportunity. Now, if you're wondering who this guy is, this is Sean Martin. Sean Martin's been a pastor and a counselor and a scholar and, uh, and uh, is currently as a ministry functioning as a chaplain and then also functioning as well as a, uh, a counselor in, uh, in your own, uh, your own uh, ministry and business there, right? Yep. And different things. So... We had a chance to uh, go to the Pumpkin Festival today. It was a great opportunity. Saw lots of folks. He, first time experience, great time experience, mid-Missouri, because you're from Idaho, Idaho, right? Well, right. and I couldn't remember. I, I want to say Mel, but that's where you pastored, though. What, that was where I pastored. pastored. But where are you living now? Nampa. 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 Nampa there you Idaho. go. There you yeah. go. And I can't, you know, age, age sucks <laughs> when, you can't, when you can't remember these, these different things yeah. with it. Well. But with his expertise, I thought we would just chat about uh, something that's, that's out there about mental health. And uh, Sean's got a lot of experience in that in, in a number of different facets. So I thought I'd just ask a couple questions about that and the Far church away. and Jesus and, and those kinds of things. So if you were to, if you had, and now we've got you know, 20 more minutes here, give or take. But if you had to sum it all up in about two minutes, what, what would you say to somebody, you know, in, in the church and about their mental health and, and their spiritual health that honestly just seems to go right in hand in hand? One thing for sure that we understand as clinicians and just as human beings is that um, we're holistic. So the body, the soul, the spirit, all of it is connected, so if the body is sick, uh, it's going to affect the soul, it's going to affect the spirit, it's going to affect the whole person. So if the mind is sick, it is also going to affect the whole person. Um, and Pastor Rob and I have had these conversations where we talk about uh, the stigma that is in the church regarding mental health and how that is needing to change. And it is changing in some areas. We are seeing that I think um, so. being embraced more. Uh, as pastors and uh, laity people in the pews begin to understand that mental illness is not just, oh, I feel blah, I need to pray more, um, I need to read the Bible more, there's something wrong with my relationship with God. Um, and I'm not negating that any of that stuff isn't important, because it is. Uh, the spiritual part of the human being is just as important as any other parts of the human being. So we also understand that there's spiritual sickness, unrepentance, um, various uh, disciplines that are not being practiced. Um, I already named them, prayer and worship and being part of the church community, all very important. But there's also this aspect of mental health um, chemically, which can also affect um, how a person is. So depression, uh, we know people can feel depressed. We know there's symptomology of depression that isn't necessarily clinical depression. Maybe the result of weather, which affects me uh, personally, because in wintertime in Idaho, I don't do so good. Mm -hmm. I, I don't do well at all. And I have been uh, on medications before in the wintertime because I get so depressed. Mm. And it has a lot to do with chemistry. So I've become uh, aware through you know my own study that I need a lot more vitamin D, I need a lot more exercise, and that is is helpful to me. And if that doesn't work, then I'm I'm good with going back to my doctor and saying, "Hey, I need an antidepressant because I'm just not really doing well." So you talked about exercise. Yeah. You know, I find that a couple of the ways that I uh, fight certain depressive issues or certain problems is I got to go out and and do something physical, and not just Very important. walk. Um, not just go to the gym. I haven't seen the inside of a gym in a while, but um, and, and, a, and a lot of it's just here as well as it is in the body too, but I'll go out and mow the lawn and because I'm getting two things done. Number one, I'm sweating. 
you know, I'm getting my heart rate up. I'm doing right. something physical, which I think our bodies were made to do they way are. more physical things than what we do do Absolutely. Uh, with that. Yeah. And the other thing is, and, I, and, 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 and you may want to speak to this too, and it's just right here in, in Rob Jackson's head. I, I think I'm actually going and doing something. I'm accomplishing something. Right. Sure. I can walk away. I'm tired. I'm sweaty, yes. smelly, lawn smelly, but I've gotten the lawn mode. Right. You or, can see the accomplishment. Yeah. Or I've, 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 you know, split a bunch of wood or chainsawed a bunch of wood or something like that. Can I mean, right. is, is that out of the ordinary or anything? No, I think that's also important um, for uh, several reasons, and, and you know this from what you do as an EMT. When you have that fight or flight, which you get the call and mm -hmm. it's like, it's on. Oh, yeah. Then all of these adrenaline is released and all of these endorphins are released. And the way that those get processed out of the body is through exercise mm. or, you know, we, <laughs> we like to, to say, go get a massage. Well, we find out clinically massages are actually really good for your mental health and good for your body because as that person is pressing those areas on your muscles on your body the the toxins and those um, chemicals that have been stored in your body are being processed out of your body so it's really really important that we keep up with the physical part of our of our exercise diet also extremely important and so um, as we're talking the holistic piece is, is what keeps coming back because it's all connected. So going outside, exercise, those endorphins are released. You feel better. Uh, people talk about the runner's high. Well, that's a real thing. Um, people that do that, <laughs> yeah, God I don't, bless them. <laughs> let me tell you, I don't get that either. Thing. <laughs> Only thing I run to is dinner and, and or a meal of some sort. I run sort. to Dairy Queen whenever well, you get a chance. I'm, but, I'm, uh, I'm not, I've, no, but I, I've heard that too. Sure. And and would that be pretty much along the same lines? You think? I I, I believe it's yeah. true. Uh, and I think some of the the difficulties we've had, of course, during COVID, is um, people weren't doing purposeful activity. Now I'm sequestered away from my job. Now everything's done through Zoom. Now I'm not interacting right? with people, which is a social aspect of the human person. We are built for social interactions, so we need to be engaging with people and this is where the church is so important mm. people need that community to feel a part of something and have a purpose so that you know you're not in church for sunday that affects other people in the body because you're not there and they miss you and they would like to see you and it affects you because you're not there and you're not engaging socially and spiritually with your church community so it's all very much connected you know, it's amazing that the ecclesia has nothing to do with the building. It has nothing to do with the building. You're it, right. It, except for maybe some of that exercise, paint the walls, things sheep like shed. that. <laughs> it's a sheep yeah, shed. Pretty much. You're right. It's a sheep shed. That is exactly well, what, it is. what it is. But you can gather right here. You can gather in a hay barn. You can get, you know. Coffee shop. It's amazing how when the church and the ecclesia and the words that they use, and even Jesus says, we're two or three. Exactly. Two or three are gathered. Right. You know, there he is in the middle of the church. Right. You know, and, and I'll tell you, that's that's one of the things that I've certainly been trying to push post-COVID. You yes. know, we, we continue to do the videos. Today we're doing them in a, in a little different, different uh, fashion just to be consistent. Sure. But, um, you know, uh, we continue to do those to bless people. But, but boy, it comes with a double-edged sword. It, it, it does indeed. Uh, it's great that we can get the information out and you get to you know feed on the Word of God but at the same time it is not the same because you're not interacting and you're not engaging um, you could ask for prayer uh, you know through digital means but it means so much more when somebody lays hands on you because oh, we yeah. know that physical touch also is part of healing the sure. healing process I mean Jesus is there the Holy Spirit is there but, but that physical part getting a hug we know that releases endorphins sure very healthy so uh, Paul had a good thing we believe it was Paul in Hebrews when he says do not stop meeting together yeah. he's talking about more than just because you know it's a, it's a religious activity which you know it's it's not it's what Jesus commands us to do right it has nothing to do with being religious it has to do with being a fellowship and being part of the ecclesia as as pastor says and yet how many times have we taken that gathering and I'm gonna boy huh, watch the toes and I can see the delete coming <laughs> huh, somebody watching this delete yeah. but but how many times have we turned because I've done it I'm, I'm guilty 
how many times have we turned our services into an element of an event right. versus the gathering of the saints, exactly. utilizing the worship not in performance, right. but as a calling together of lifting up the name of Jesus, exactly. using using the element of, of teaching, yes. you know, and, and getting our message out instead of teaching the saints to go out and build the kingdom of God. I am guilty as charged, and boy, I, I really try to work hard to not, to not, you know, Travis back to that. Right, right, right. Well, even if we were even talk about the sacraments, the Lord's table, uh, this is my body. Jesus is interacting with the disciples. He's saying, "Take partake of this. Mm. Partake of this. Is, this is part, we're together. And that together part is part of being uh, healed and made whole. Jesus' presence is in the communion. We know that. We, sure. we invoke His presence. He is oh, yeah. present. It's not in the. It's not in the stuff. It's not in the bread. Or the and it's juice. not the magical thing either. It's not you know, the magical thing. It's the Holy Spirit coming in. Yeah. But where two or three are gathered, again, that healing process, and we know this post-COVID, um, people aren't getting well spiritually if they're still sequestered away in their homes and watching things online. Um, again, it's a great media. It's helpful it for the shut-ins. They can't get out, and, and they're stuck there. But we really need people to get back out and get back into the churches. And your spiritual growth is stunted oftentimes. I'm not saying this for everybody because we can't right. be general like that. But uh, people's, people are often stunted spiritually because they're not engaging anymore in their spiritual life. So that's a, it's a very much a part of mental health. Uh, and, and I'm an advocate for... Uh, the church being a resource, a part of people's wholeness and well-being. Uh, it's a resource. And so even in counseling, uh, as a Christian counselor, I will go to those places with people and say, okay, are you going and being a part of the body? Right. Because if you're not, that is not going to be healthy yeah. for you. So, and, and, you know, and we'll go to those places. Are you, you know, what do you think about Jesus? What do you believe about him? Is he your savior? Is he your Lord? Are you praying? Are you doing the disciplines of reading your word? And, and we, we encourage that, you know, we're not gonna be critical of that, but at the same time, we realize as a mental health professionals that that is also part and parcel of being well. Gotcha. Well, I'm gonna, I'm, I don't wanna shift gears too much. And, and I know even talking about this is the tip of the iceberg. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, we've got about uh, 10 more minutes here of, of clock time, which is why I'm using the, you know, because that camera over there only gives us 28 minutes. Oh, gotcha. Um, this is back. This is the camera I used during COVID. And let me tell you, the congregation loved it because when they started that, they knew they had 28 minutes to go. <laughs> right. But but anyway, um, so something practical, practical to walk away from, you know. Uh, we are we are living in a day where if you watch the news media on its regular cycle, not its current this past week, yeah. but I'll touch on that here in a second. But in its regular cycle, they are just telling you how many things are always going bad right. and wrong. Right. And I've told people, get rid of the news. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with being up to date, but there's yeah. another thing wrong with just letting the cycle, 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 cycle. You right. know, keep going and pounding right. in your head. You know, there's nothing wrong with being aware. There is everything wrong of just letting it, you know, pound away at you. Sure. Certainly we've had, you know, the wars and rumors of wars. We've got the Ukraine that's been going on now for a little over a year and a half. Right. We've got Israel, um, you know, and the Hamas thing going on right now. Right. And um, if for nothing else, pray for the peace of the people of the kingdom of God. Amen. That includes Israel. That includes our brothers and sisters, you know, everywhere on the planet, Ukraine, Russia, you know, and I even think there's some believers in the Gaza Strip as well. You know, um, let, let's pray that Jesus comes quickly. Amen. Yes. But until so. then, <laughs> we've got a job to do, and that's building God's kingdom. Right. What are some of the things we can do? You know, um, I know, pray, read the word. You, you've talked about all the things, being in the, being in the kingdom. What are some of the other things that we can do to, to keep up here well, to keep right here well, to keep Jesus mm -hmm. in us well? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, we're, and we're fighting an uphill battle. Yeah. So yeah, your thoughts. Indeed. indeed. Um, well, the things we've talked about already, I think, are, are key, which is, you know, do not stop meeting together, be in fellowship with one another, yeah. uh, practice those disciplines we talked about, um, and really seek the Lord. The thing that uh, I realize is that Jesus is our healer, and I do believe 100% mm. that he does heal. Yeah. Um, 
does he heal the same way all the time? No, and that's no. why uh, that's true. I'm okay with people taking medication for mental health reasons. I, I'm, I'm all right with that, especially if they've tried other things and it's like, mm, no, nah, it's just not, just not working. We live in a very anxiety-prone time. Uh, people are anxious about everything all the time. There has to come a point where, as we read the Word of God and we see, as we read it, we're seeing it being fulfilled, and we know that the Bible is right on with prophecy. And so it we, is. We, we know that eventually Jesus is going to come back, and, and all this is not going to matter anymore. Very true. So there's this point of, you know, we, we live on the earth, and we're part of the earth, and we continue to function on the earth, and yet we look to the sky <laughs> because... We know our redemption is, is coming near. And that should, you know, as we walk in that, that should relieve a lot of that anxiety. I would question, you know, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? There you go. Are, if you're having this much anxiety to the point where I'm not functioning, um, looking at your spiritual life is okay. I'm not saying that's all that's yeah. going on because anxiety can be a part of a chemical issue with your brain as well. And there are medications for that too. And the enemy will certainly take every chance oh, he can. Absolutely, absolutely. He wants you to live in fear. He wants you to be anxious so that you are uh, unable to do anything. He he wants you to be that you know fight or flight while well, you're freezing now because you're not you're so afraid to go outside your door you can't even go to the steak and shake or whatever is your normal right? kind of behavior. He wants you to be be like that. So I would encourage you uh, if you're struggling with that, you know. The Bible says reach out to one another, right. um, reach out to the elders, reach out to your pastor, um, and, and get some resources and get some help and get some people on board praying. Why? Because prayer takes down strongholds. I firmly believe that, and that's mm. what we're called upon to do as Christians. Sure. So we pray, as Pastor said, we pray for the peace of Israel. Of course we do, and we continue to Absolutely. do so. And we can pray for peace for ourselves as well. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, you know, that's is, is that the whole answer for that question? That's a big question. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, how, how, do we, how do we navigate in these times? Well, a lot of it, I think, is, is you said it, and you're right. It's time to stop looking at the negative media all the mm. time. The, the media is designed negatively to keep you watching. It wants yeah. to you to keep in fear because it wants to you to keep watching well, for the next big thing that's going to go isn't down. Isn't it not just wanting you to watch so they can make money? <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, you know, yeah, of course. I mean, that's that's part of it and the more they stir that up. Of course. Yeah. We know that social media is designed with this scrolling feature right. to keep There's you engaged as long as possible and to shove as many <laughs> advertisements your way as it can. So at some point uh, you know, people have got to have the discipline to just turn it off. Oh, yeah. And, and then, you know, it's time to do something else. Like mow the grass. Like go for a walk. Like be outside. Like go on a prayer walk. You know, have, have has anybody ever done that? Pastor was just telling me about this beautiful trail that goes the full length of the state. I mean, what a great resource to oh, have. Yeah. It, it can and, be. And, and to be out in nature, you know, the God's creation. Because I tell you, this... I would much rather, and I'm glad, Pastor, you put us outside uh, instead of inside, because this this makes me feel better just being out in it. Right. You know, I'll tell you the scripture that comes to my mind, and um, for those of you who think I'm that scholarly and have the you know date, verse, time book, and all that, I don't. <laughs> but I will say this: I know, I know this. Paul wrote, "God did not give us a spirit of fear." Amen. That's right. He gave us though a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. mind. Yeah. And, and as we believe in him and we go back, to, I have been referring back to John 3.16, I don't know how many times this year, right. you know, because how many times do we make it so complicated to follow God in our churches and our service, in our this and our that, you got to be part of this, fellow, that. Right. Jesus just said, believe. Yep. And then when he was done with the believe, he said, go make disciples. Yep. That's what he said. You know, I mean... I can't find any more of the two more simplest things that he said. He never said, go build a cathedral. He never said, you know, go, you know, he talked about himself as the temple, but never said, go build these great big walled churches. He said for ourselves to believe and for everybody. And when you're done with that, because you're, you're sold on it, yeah. go build disciples. And then I like to add, go build his kingdom. Right. And you do that by building disciples. Yeah, very much so. You know, very much very so. Good. And that's a part of the purpose. Uh, that we talk about as well. And so some of that uh, struggle with anxiety, I firmly believe, is people just lacking lacking a sense of purpose. Well, you have a purpose. God has given you oh, a purpose. Yes. 
And so focus on, on the purpose that he has given you yeah. uh, to help combat that. And if you don't know, you know that, go, go back to what you do know. Yeah, exactly. I, I've, I've counseled a lot and, and co uh, coached a lot of uh, younger men and women. You know, well, I don't know this or that. Well, let's just start with the simple things. You love Jesus, right? You believe. You're a Christian, right? Okay, great. You know, you're called to something. Okay, great. And that is build the kingdom. So, so let's go with that. Yeah. And then some of the simple things are, what do you like to do? Yeah. No, really. No, you it's know? the truth. No, it's what, the what truth. do you like to do? Because um, there are certain things I don't like to do, but there are a lot of things that I do like to do. And, right. and you know, it's amazing that how one guy, and, and this is not really biblical, but I think it is, how one guy said, you know, if you do what you like to do, you'll never work a day of your life. Well, if you do what you like to do, building God's kingdom, we'll never work a day of a life for us, and we'll really never work for him, but we'll go about in his obedience. Right. Which, is that right. stretching the truth a little too much? No, I don't, I don't think so at all. And it's, it's, a, it's a given fact. They've done surveys and statistics, on, certainly on law enforcement, mm -hmm. um, where they're burned out. Right. And one of the questions they ask is, well, what, uh, what is it that you did, did, past tense, to help with your stress? Mm -hmm. and, and they ask that question in the past tense because typically they're not doing any of the things that they used to enjoy. Right. They're not fishing anymore. They're not hunting anymore. They're not doing uh, family time anymore. And, and they're just, they're, they've just cut that completely out of their life. Uh, and so that is part of the stress that they're experiencing and the burnout that is occurring is because they're not doing the things that they used to do that really brought a sense of joy and, and fulfillment in their lives. Instead, they're just working all the time and, uh, and are, are tired. But when they look at their lifestyle, obviously they're not, they're not living the ultimate uh, lifestyle that they, sure. they used to live. Uh, they've cut out the things that really are the most well, important and continue to do too much overtime or whatever. Right. They, well, they I'm do. I'm right there with it. You're you've been there as well too. You know, right. um, for for a number of different scenarios with it. Well, we've got about two or three minutes left. Parting sure. thoughts. Uh, there's a movement uh, that is on our time with mental health professionals, professional counselors, uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, what have you. Um, really engaging more with clergy, with pastors. Um, and I think this is a good movement. Um, okay. There are some churches that are saying, hey, we've got this office space. Uh, it's just sitting there. Um, we're, we're open to a mental health professional counselor coming and using that to, to speak to uh, members of the congregation. So some of those walls and some of that stigma is going uh, away. I think we need a little more work. Um, and in time, I think it'll, it'll get better. But I'm, I'm really uh, very uh, positive to see that happen. It makes me very feel cool. like we're going in the right direction. And so uh, it's not a threat to the clergy, and certainly the mental health people should understand that uh, spirituality and being part of a congregation is going to help um, their, their client uh, in every way and shape and form. So I like to see this more of um, engaging and interacting uh, and building resources because um, we, you know, people come to the church. They have all kinds of needs. Maybe they have physical mm. needs, uh, and then we can refer them to a place where they can get um, food or housing or clothing. It's also important. It's part right. of part of uh, part of their well-being is to be clothed and to have, uh, you know, food and these kind of things. So resources are important and mental health uh, professionals is part of the resource sure. uh, that clergy can use. I'll, I'll tell you and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him out straight up on camera and, and I hope he sees this. Um, there's a pastor down in Iberia, Missouri. His name's uh, Cliff Sanders and, um, and I'll tell you something. I, I, I am jealous at him because he went out and he hired a youth pastor who's also a social worker. Okay, good. You know, so not only is he dealing with the youth Mm -hmm. of, of what's going on, but he's got somebody who understands the resources to walk through some of the, the trying times that families are seeing, you right. know, with that right. as well. So I see both of those as a thing. And yes, am I, jealous of, am I jealous of you? You're darn right, because I didn't think about it. That's how that's going down. It's a win-win. <laughs> it is. It is, yeah. a, it is a huge win-win, yeah. you know, that, that we're doing uh, with that. Yeah, absolutely. Sean, thanks for your time. You're welcome. I, I appreciate it. It is... Um, it's been a, a joy to hang out with you. 
It's been fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to take him down. He's uh, he's in his doctrinal program at uh, AG Theo, right? AG mm -hmm. Theo. Yeah, great. So uh, we're going to go right down to Springfield uh, uh, now with that and just kind of hang out together with it. But thanks for taking the time to do this. Welcome, I, I appreciate friend. it. This is, this is a level that I do function in, but I certainly don't have the in-depth training that you do with it. On, on that kind of a thing. So with that, um, I'm, I'm gonna close in prayer. I got a couple yeah. of minutes for the camera uh, clicks out here. Absolutely. But uh, certainly this, you know, stay in love with Jesus. Amen. You know, 100%. it's amazing. It's amazing how many of your problems, when you quit focusing on you, focusing on Jesus, which he calls us to do, right. you know, and, and his people. And certainly we need to be well in ourselves too and take those times to do that. But boy, you know, as we're doing that, focusing on other things, it's, it's yeah. amazing how those things work out. Father, thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. Lord, I pray for traveling mercies for us today and for everybody else on the other side of that camera. Lord, I pray for the peace of Israel. I pray for the yes, peace Jesus. in the Ukraine. I pray for the peace of your people around the planet, Lord Jesus. And yes, Lord, that's a broad stroke because we, man, right now, I just don't have the time to, to list them all. But here's what I do know, Lord. As we go about your business, mm -hmm. as, I've, as I have closed many, many of our services, Lord, I pray when people see us, they really just see yes, you, Lord. and that we would yes, be a Lord. people that yes, seeks Lord. after the kingdom of God. And I thank you for that, Lord God. Yes, Jesus. And if you believe that, I ask you to say amen, and God bless you as you go, and certainly go tell people about who the King of kings and Lord of lords is, and be well in the peace of Jesus. God bless you.